Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests, especially those who evaluate in the second person. I realize that this is my newest club, and this is sort of like my icebreaker speech for this club. So I figured, what am I going to do? It's an advanced club. Well, I get it. I know. Why don't I just start with a controversy? <laughs> and I'm glad that we had our speakers before and uh, talk about saying I, saying you, saying we. That works in coaching. That works when you're establishing something on the side. But when you are in front of people, giving an evaluation, just like we do in Toastmasters all the time, why not start by using the third person? Now, as Aileen mentioned, the second person is you, you, you. The first person is obviously I, I think. And the third person is he, she, or they. Now, using you is the default, right? You did this well. I think you did that very well. I think you could do this better. But, in Toastmasters, we're not evaluating you. What are we evaluating? The speech. It. She did it as well. Her action was great. Her visuals were awesome. Do you see how that opens up the whole stage? And if it weren't for this method, I actually wouldn't even, maybe even be here. Because this might be a little controversial, not so much to you, or maybe it's a small controversy in your head, and you have a strong preference. But for me, it was a real. And it was real last year as I was going through the evaluation contest that we have in the fall. There I was in the club contest using the second person like I learned. You did this so well. You did that so well. And I got second place. But when the first place person was to go to China for a trip as a job, I got shut up to go to the area contest. <laughs> And this particular club that I was representing doesn't like the second person. That's why I lost. So it was a controversy. It's like, Chris, you got to use a third person. This is Sierra speaking. Oh, maybe I shouldn't mention the club. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to use a second person. That's just the way it's done. It's better that way. And I said, no, no, I'm representing. i got to do it my way. My way is working, and look, I won the area contest too. So I'm in the division contest using the second person. No, 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 this is your best chance. If you want to move on, you must use the third person. So I used the third person. And it was awkward. It took a little practice. But the advantage of it was very real. Because I was last in that lineup, and, this, and the person who went before me was using the second person. <laughs> you, you, you. You, you, you. And he was very good at it, I, I was told. And while he was zeroing in on the person that was speaking over here, the problem was the timer was over there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that contestant went overtime. <laughs> they might have beaten me. But he went overtime, so I won. <laughs> because I used a third person and I was able to walk around and look at the time and include the audience and include the person who's speaking too. You don't have to go all just talk about someone behind their back even though they're not behind your back. You can talk about the person in your evaluation as well. The other one I want to say is that, okay, just to get more to the second person, most of you might think if you prefer second person, it's you, 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 it's more personal that way. But to me in the audience, I feel kind of left out if I'm just looking at you being tunnel vision on one person. I might think, you got to just, why don't you get a room? <laughs> we are in a hotel, right? The you, you, you is better off in a coaching session, one-on-one. -on -one. When you're in the audience, you must include the audience. How do you include the audience? Is the third person. You can implore all those things that we learned last month from Paul and from what you know. Maybe you use a clipboard, maybe you don't use notes, maybe you talk about certain aspects like the hologram like we learned. You can do all that in second person or third person, but third person opens up your whole dimension on the stage. 
You don't have to feel like you're scrunched behind the table looking at the TV, right? It's the same way. The third person, you can talk all, you can walk all around. And some people think that using second person is all about, it's just all about the speaker. So you want to make sure that speaker is lifted up and teach them. That doesn't mean third person isn't. But third person is more about the evaluator. It's more about the audience, too. It's all inclusive, including the things that the second person people value most. It doesn't limit you, either. The advantages are, well, when I was learning how to do third person, I found it advantageous because when I was doing second person, I was kind of offensive. You might notice that I have a very strong voice, right? And if I say the wrong things, they are also said very strongly. <laughs> and if it's directed at you, if you are the speaker and I'm looking at you the whole time, wouldn't it make you squirm? <laughs> when I am just doing a speech and I was sitting down, I've worked very hard on the speech and I sit down, I'm relieved. And if I have to go through two or three more minutes of evaluation and someone zeroing in on me the whole time, you did this, you well, you did this well, you did this well, it kind of makes me kind of jittery still. <laughs> what are they going to say good? What are they going to say bad? Are they lying? Are they truthful? I don't know. But I have to feel like I'm on when I'm in the, con when I'm in the audience still versus if I'm a third person. If the, if the evaluator is used in third person, they might go back and forth to me, occasionally. Or, anybody look at other people, and I know they're talking about me, of course, but <laughs> I'm more relieved. We'll see. But you don't have to use third person exclusively. That would be kind of rude, too. So why not use both? One technique that I saw in a contest that was very effective was that the, the evaluator used third person for all the positives of the speech. And when it came down to the recommendations, that's when he zeroed in on the speaker and said, you did this, you, well, something you can do better next time is this. And yes, that gets more personal, a little more intimate, perhaps a little change of tone, but it was a nice mix of dimension and it worked very well and he actually won. So fellow Toastmasters, I realize the irony of the position I am right now. I'm the last speech, and the next segment you have is evaluations. <laughs> but what I implore you to do is to pay attention to our evaluators, no pressure, <laughs> and see what they use, second person or third. How they use it interchangeably, or if they don't, and if you prefer to do their methods, do you see the methods that I propose? And would you see the merits of opening up to third person or second person on certain parts they use. And hopefully then you'll see that there are big, big merits to using evaluations for three. <laughs> now I have a Q&A for two to three minutes, so give me what you got. Uh, Perhaps another place? person. Did you place at the district? You did place, right? I did place, ironically, second. <laughs> and I reviewed the video of that because uh, Robert filmed all of us. And yes, Paul, the winner, did use second person. <laughs> but the second place and third place winners, me and, and another person, used third person. So it can be effective. Exclusively third person, or did you do both? Interchangeable. Inter and uh, Paul did? Mm -hmm. Paul just, 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 just did the second yeah. person. With a little bit of audience participation, that's part of it, I think, was you won. Yes? I'm convinced. But it would have been good if you actually did an example. Right. And the sign back. Okay. An example was when I was talking about her presentation at Kona. You did this well. You did this well. I think the you're yes. Twenty second evaluation this way. Okay. Same thing. Okay. okay. And then I talked, but I didn't talk about her visual over here. I felt it was very effective and very organized. It wasn't necessarily that you did this well. You did this visual. I felt like this worked very well. The way that you did it was great. There's a little difference. Yeah, I didn't spend it out, but maybe if I have more time, I will. 
And if there's no other questions, I might. <laughs> well, yeah. It might be hard. It is controversial because when you hear different people say you should focus on the speaker and not so much on the audience, and then you hear the opposite where you left out the audience. So. Yeah. But in the contest, I can see how using third person. Would be and again, it's good. You, you is good for coaching. Good for one on one. Good for after the meeting when you're also evaluating the speaker. One on one. When you're in front of people, they kind of want to be included. And if you don't include them, yeah, you might be engaging, but you also probably will lose them, especially if you don't have eye contact. Right. So, but, but what you're saying is use both interchangeably as appropriate because you cannot exclude. Person. Yes, I mean, I prefer third person in general, right. but third person is, is inclusive for 99% of the audience. That 1% that's left is very important too, and that is the speaker themselves. Right. Any other questions? Well, I know that when I do an evaluation, you might be seeing me in a different light. I implore you to pay attention to what I do and use third person. I know Jeff is a big fan of mine, and using third person is one of those reasons. But if you use third person instead of second person or interchangeably, it will literally add a third dimension to your evaluations.